Hello Zero K fans, this is Shadow 33 bringing you another exhibition match, and this time it's going to be, oh, replay. This time it's going to be Golda vs. Kloon on Titan Duel, and came up a bit of a request just because people, after my last, I think it was Golda actually, after my last stream, I did, well I did the game between Golda and Kloon on Battle for Planet 17, which didn't go very well. Well, not for Kloon at least. And then I got pointed out that this game here was apparently a much better game. It's going to be on Titan Duel, which is also a much better map. So, hey, there's, that's a start. And without further ado, we'll get into it. So briefly going over, Titan Duel, flat map, good for vehicles. You have pretty much plus two spots everywhere. Both players start in the corners. You have about three spots each. Players typically will try to take the corners pretty quick. Usually the southeast player tries to take the northwest, northeast corner and the... The Northwest player tries to take the Southwest corner, but it is quite fluid. The map is symmetric along the Northwest to Southeast diagonal. That other way, let's get out of the game. Kloon, going for light vehicles. Gulda going also for light vehicles. Gulda is also going very quick for a solar. <laughs> I don't know how soon after the previous game that I cast between them with the wind problems was before this one, but I mean, on this map, solar is just the better option. Although, admittedly, Kloon is going for wind. 0.2 to 2.5, not the most reliable, but at this stage in the game, it's not that big of a deal. As in, metal is very important, power is sort of important, but you have... It's... you're kind of relying on reserve up at this point. Although in this map, there's actually quite a lot of walk time between the metal extractors, so a little bit of power is useful. Just so you have a bit of parity in between, because you are going to run through... You're either going to be accessing metal, or you're going to be... Well, yeah, I guess that's it. This is gonna be, you're going to be accessing metal pretty easily if you try to focus too much on metal and not get power. Anyway, Kloon coming in initially, getting a dart in, and getting rid of metal extractor being half-constructed. Small loss. Another one over the west side, which doesn't actually succeed in doing anything. Well, Kloon has been very slightly harassed, but no real damage. Would have lost a dart, escaped another one. And that is... That's that. Not much really going on. Just the standard early game scouting. Clone, however, going a bit aggressive. Golda is relying quite a lot on darts, while Clone has switched immediately to Scorchers. At this point, it's almost Clone going for the ra riots against Golda's essentially raiders. I mean, scouts scouts are to raiders what riots... Or scouts are to raiders what raiders are to riots. So these darts aren't going to have much of a chance, though admittedly, getting enough darts, they do deal a scary amount of damage. I believe they're 55 DPS, which is... Yes, that's right. Which is actually half of a dagger. So if you have six or so darts, you have effectively three daggers, except they die in one shot each. Like I said, they die pretty quick, so it's a, it's a little bit difficult to make that work out nicely. However, Kloon trying to get in, not even really able to get in, you can't, as has been mentioned before, for those of you unfamiliar, Retreat Micro in 0k is extremely powerful. Because of the way that the physics work in the game, retreating away from unit means that your units get hit less and theirs get hit more as they're essentially running into your bullets. I realize this doesn't follow conservation of momentum, but that's what I mean by this game's physics. Which means that if you have units kind of blo they're kind of body blocking an area in the map, your opponent's units can't really go through without taking a lot of damage. Which is why we saw Clone right there try to weave around Gulda's units rather than going straight through them. Despite the fact that Scorchers deal more damage at close range, although admittedly that is mutual at that point, still, you generally don't want to be running into your opponent's forces. And, as we can see here, Kloon actually not paying for it in that case, I mean that, that Scorcher was damaged, but we can see that Kloon Scorcher was very, very heavily damaged, about 30% health left. And Kloon trying to block off Golda's approach, Golda trying to go to the south, trying to avoid Kloon's forces entirely, and Kloon not in the best of positions. This Mason is pretty much dead at the south side of the map. I think Gold No, Gold is actually not going to go for it. Kloon, I don't think Kloon's aware. Kloon is aware of this. Kloon is fully aware of this. They have full radar coverage over their side of the map. Gold, on the other hand, not at all aware of this. They did not know there was a Mason there, and they did not go for it. It would have been a rather dangerous thing. It probably would have been a suicide mission, all things considered. But it's not a bad idea, because... I mean, okay. I jumped ahead of myself there. It's not a bad idea to put your units between your opponent's army and your opponent's base. It's a bit of a suicide thing if you ha you need an exit route for this to really work, but what it does is it forces your opponent to approach you. 
Because if your opponent's on defensive, they can retreat, which puts them at the advantage. If you put yourself in between their units and their base, they have to retreat, they have to advance into your forces in order to defend. Which is very powerful. It's you can essentially force a conflict. If you know your opponent will lose, you can force them to fight you by doing that. Or put them in a situation where they feel they have to fight you. Our unfortunately clone, not realizing there was a Lotus there, ends up running a Scorcher into it, loses one, barely escapes the other, and Golda is going to try to intercept, and I think, yeah, clone, clone aware of this, and loses that Scorcher, couldn't, they could maybe gone south, but it would have been very hard to do, so that, that Scorcher was effectively dead. At this point, Golda and clone are pretty even on the map, though Golda is starting to just take the entire north side. Clone, I think, is expanding about the same rate, but has been much more contained, they've been they have been expanding entirely in their corner, while Gold, on the other hand, they seem to be spreading out a bit more, but I think it might just... No, not really. No, never mind. They're, they're about even. Although Golda did have some units set up to try to deal with the Northeast, take that. And this is what I mean. Golda forced to advance into Clone's forces, while Clone kind of splits the forces in between. Gets rid of Metal Extractor, but loses, a, loses all their Scorchers, I think, in the process. All but one of their Scorchers in the process. That did not work out as well as it could have. Golda basically pincered Clone. That was... I think Clone might have been trying to force Golda's hand, or I probably didn't even know Golda was here. Actually, they probably didn't even know Golda was here. Let's see. What? No, Clone actually would have known. Clone would have known that Golda had forces there. I'm not sure if Clone was trying to force Golda to advance into their forces, but regardless, they were pincered. And that never really goes well. Or it's very hard to make that go well, at least. Especially... No, it, it rarely goes well. So Golda, at this point, is fairly ahead. I've really been following their factory. Sorry about that. Yeah, Golda at this point is slightly ahead in terms of military, at least by cost. Clone, however, switching over to Slashers, they want to have a nice defensive line. This is Clone, after all. It's actually kind of surprising. I mean, we know that Clone is playing as a really good player because Clone has been losing units. Clone doesn't lose units lightly. And the Slasher is much... Well, much more to do with Clone's defensive style than it is with Clone's tendency to save their units. Kind of the same thing. Two sides of the same coin, but in this case, Clone is favoring... Clone tends to like defense, as we can see... Actually, not so much exclusively, though. As we can see, Clone does have defense scattered around their territory. Gold, on the other hand, just has their static defense at the border. Anything that gets through this border is basically home free into Golda's factory. Not much is going to stop them. Clone, on the other hand, they have static defense throughout. They have slashes they're building up. They have... Actually, less radar coverage and vision than Golda has. Actually, nah, it's about the same. Notice slightly more. They have the southwest and the northeast. Golda only has the southwest. They have the northeast by sight, but not by radar. Although, admittedly, sight is better than radar. But yeah, Golda is really trying to take that northwest. Also going for the... Sorry, northeast. Also starting to go for the southwest. Bit of a longer-term plan for Golda. Pushing their commander out there, but that is a battle commander. That's not going to have a problem. Clone, on the other hand, has been using a support commander think. Why can't I find the commanders whenever I want to actually talk about them? Anyway, we we'll get to that later. This one, Golda has switched over to Ravagers and... I can't remember the factory thing. Well, switching over to a couple Ravagers. However, that was not the best move. Scorchers basically wreck Ravagers. I mean, for cost, of course, but still, that was... Unfortunately, due to poor targeting, the only reason that... The only reason Golda did not lose any forces there was that Clone did not target Micro. If Clone target microed, that would have been a dead Mason and a couple dead Ravagers. And yes, Clone does have a support commander, I was exactly right. Did have a support commander, I was exactly right. Now Clone has a smoking wreck. Right in no man's land. Oh man, that is a terrible place for that to happen. And Clone can't even guarantee capturing that right now. They have a Mason right next to it, a couple Masons right next to it. If they actually build a Caretaker or two, they should be able to take it. The build range of a Caretaker is enough. But no, they're going to go with the Mason instead. While Gorda presses the assault along the south side of the map, McClone continuing to counter with the Scorchers. However, not enough Scorchers to counter the Ravagers. I did say by cost, that's 520 cost, compared to... Yeah, there's double the cost in Ravagers. Not the best option. Levelers, however, will be the best option for Gorda. Gorda knock over those and is actually going to lose their commander as well. But as with all commander loss, one thing about 0k, bearing in mind... I mean, it's actually true of all TA-based games, but in most cases... 0k is one of the few TA-based games where losing your commander is not death. There are others. 0k is one of them. And as a result, losing your commander means everything around it dies, or is heavily damaged. 
Bit of a defensive mechanic, actually, but not really one you can easily exploit. It has been exploited in the past, but it's not one that is easy to exploit because you do lose a fair amount of economy and build power in the process. But yeah, the commander dying, that can make a defense, if it, especially on defense, that can make holding that defense difficult because the commander's going to get rid of most of that army, especially if it's light raiders, and then your opponent's going to have their army free to attack, as we've seen just now with Gorda. At this point, Gorda has a sparse presence across most of the map, with a fairly dense presence along the southwest where Kuhn is desperately trying to push it back. Getting rid of Ravager after Ravager, but neither player has gone for levelers. Surprisingly enough, I I don't understand why neither player has gone for levelers. Kuhn has gone for the air switch for Ravens a few minutes ago, but neither player has gone for levelers, which would work perfectly here. Kuhn is going to try to use the Ravens. This will work fairly well, especially as the, some the Scorchers are getting stuck here. But I'm, I am surprised, nonetheless. Now bear in mind, Scorchers are one shot by Ravens. However, this is giving away the Ravens. Gorda, as a result, switches to Crashers, an unsurprising result. Although, Kuhn actually has taken care of most of Gorda's forces. At this point, Gorda has a handful of Slashers here, in, or a handful of Scorchers here and there, and now is pumping out Crashers. Gulda is over-responding to air. I mean, Klon is building a fair amount of Ravens, so it's not maybe over-responding, but in terms of... I mean, Klon's offensive capabilities on the ground are basically going to counter... Once they get rid of these Scorchers, once these Scorchers are dead, it'll be just Crashers. And there are five Crashers and about four Scorchers in Gulda's... Three... Two Scorchers in Gulda's name... No, three. In Gulda's name. Now it's two. And that is not going to work out too well. And Clone knows this. Clone is attacking at this point, forcing Golda's hand. They also know where the crashes are, so they can attack elsewhere, as they have been. Attacking to the, towards the northeast, getting rid of the mason, getting rid of the metal extractors, making sure Golda can't take the northeast. They lost a couple scorchers over to the west side of the map. But these ravens are basically attacking the areas that are undefended. Because Clone knew where those crashes were and took advantage of this. And will actually be going just for as many metal extractors as they can. Nicely done there, just just gradually harassing, taking care of all the metal extractors they can, losing a raven in the process over to the southwest, but that was worth it. Like three metal extractors for one raven, I'd say that's worth it. Especially depending on how long it takes for Gulda to rebuild those metal extractors. Now, at the same time, over to the southwest, we do have Scorchers coming in for Kroon, harassing once again, and Kroon is being relentless with this harassment. I mean, I did say Gota is sparsely spread. Gota is spread out. They are trying to get air control now. They have gone for an air switch. They are going for Hawks. They want to take out those Ravens. But I think the Ravens have really done their job. Because the thing is, the two jobs of a Raven in the metagame are basically kill the commander and kill a bunch of metal extractors. And maybe, if you know your opponent, basically has no anti-air, kill the caretakers. And if you have already won, kill the factory. Or factories, if there are more than one. At this point, the commander's already dead, so that task is already complete. The the metal extractors are, I mean, they're being taken out bit by bit. Apart from that, attacking the main base, while it is a viable option, there aren't any caretakers. Actually, there are some caretakers. Those would be a good target, but clone doesn't know, and clone being clone will probably not go for it because they do not want to risk it. Because they're clone. I mean, they're throwing a few scorchers here and there, but at this stage in the game, one or two scorchers here and there is not going to make or break anything. Especially given the fact that they are dealing effective damage. Unfortunately, these two are going to get cornered, or could very well get cornered. No, they are able to escape, and it looks like they're actually... Are they, no, they're not going to be repaired, but they are trying to protect this mason line, which is not going to be able to get in, and it's in fact going to lose one of the number, possibly two. While Ravens go over to the southwest to try to take that out over the north, these Scorchers are managing to deal a lot of damage. Golda is t moving strongly south. That early Crasher commitment has been completed. Once the air switch happened, the Crashers stopped pouring out. So Clone, they took advantage of the opportunity where they could, and now it's over. Unfortunately, their own Crashers falling for the same problem that Clone was trying to take advantage of. That being said, though, Clone still has a very strong ground force. And they're able to push away those Scorchers, and that is all that exists here. Like, there's Scorchers, there's Crashers. There are no levelers from Clone. There are Slashers, which can help if... I mean... With the Scorchers and Ravagers running interference, the Slashers can't help, but unfortunately there are not two Slashers go down for free! I just said, well, okay, I mean, this is a replay, obviously, and admittedly my time, my purported time travel powers that have come up in the past clearly did not serve me this time. Because I did just say, Clone would need to run interference on the Slashers, which was not done. 
The slashes were unfortunately at the front line. Bear in mind that the commander here has been half reclaimed. Golda's commander, on the other hand, has been completely unreclaimed. Neither player has gone for it. Neither player is successfully able to do so. Although Kron is trying, Kron is reclaiming and nicely across the map. Golda is probably where is Golda's reclaim? You know what? I don't see any reclaim for Golda. Golda is taking the northeast side of the map. They are. They have been relentless in taking the corners. Kron has been relentless in taking reclaim. And given the numbers, Kron is actually ahead with that strategy. Oh, never mind. Gold is not really taking the southwest that hard. Taking the northeast, but not the southwest. Yeah, at this point, Kron is actually, for the next few minutes at least, fairly safe in economy. And next few minutes is very likely to be the game. This being 0k and all. So, Ravagers being pushed forward into Scorch is not the best move. Naturally being pushed back. Trying to pull them back into the Lotuses, which is not going to happen. Gold is not going to fall for that. Moves the Scorches away, tries to find a better location, tries to find a better angle, and will find it to the south. Klon, however, will get a nice flank, getting rid of a Scorcher for free, and overall able to flank the line over to Pinsert, actually. Ravens, Ravagers, and Scorchers just hitting it from all sides, and the Crashers taking the bait, the Scorchers getting rid of all the Crashers, they can do that. I mean, the Hawks are still a threat, and there are quite a few. Oh, and there's only four. Wow, that's actually not many. The Lord has just built four, and that was about it. They've, they've actually been... Staying away from that, I guess. I guess Clone's crashes have done a very good job. And now, Clone able to break through Golda's defenses. Like I said, Golda basically had that one line, and that was it. So at this point, Clone just has to run through these last few slashers. Tries to, needs to pull back their own. Sorry, Scorchers needs to pull back their own. Needs to not get rushed into it. And Golda finally gets levelers. Someone finally gets levelers. These slashers will have very little chance. However, the Ravagers already exist. So getting rid of these levelers will not be a big problem. And yeah, it looks like the Crashers have been doing a good job. So Golda can't really get anti-air that effectively. Gluon, I think, is... They, aren't, they haven't won. They are pressing a good advantage. Mostly it's their economy. They have had an economic advantage the entire time, if for nothing else than reclaim. But it has been very tight. I mean, the reclaim has just been Clone really taking... I mean, Clone has been very risky, taking a lot of risks this game. They have thrown Scorchers around the map, trying to harass everything, throwing a Ravager in here just now, throwing bombers in to take out targets they can, Thro getting, I mean, the entire game they've had Masons on the front lines, just right in the middle, reclaiming as much as they can. Golda has a few, but Klon has been consistently the entire game putting Masons up front. Golda has just been trying to expand their territory and get economy that way. All things considered, Golda has actually been staying nicely in the game. Their military is about even. But the economy has been in Klon's favor. But I mean, Klon needs every advantage they can get. And they're certainly, like I said, they're playing very risky because they basically have to. They have to take everything they can get. They can take all the economy they can get. They are now taking the southwest as well, expanding over there. But like I said, Reclaim has been what's been doing it for them. And Golda has surprisingly... What is, does Golda know about this? Yeah, they do. They have full knowledge of the fact that there's a bunch of stuff over here and that it is workers. But they haven't gone for it. They they know Clone has a bunch of defenses set up because, well, it's Clone. Clone has a bunch of defenses set up. Like, like I said before, Clone, their entire area is filled with static defense. They have units just running interference and anything trying to get in. Golda keeps trying to find angles and they've been getting in, dealing some damage, but it hasn't been enough. Especially when most of the economy infrastructure has been on the front lines, has been these masons. That's been Clone's backbone of their economy. A very risky proposition, but has worked out remarkably well in this game. And this is what I mean by running interference. These Ravagers are doing a very good job as the Slash is able to push back the Levelers here. And the Scorchers, nice flank in too, forcing Golda to attack. Clone able to retreat into Golda's territory, which is exactly what they want to do to get Golda's attention. Taking care of a few, slash, few Scorchers, but Golda still has a pretty frightening army. I mean, Clone will want to pull back and repair a bit. This is... We're getting into Slasher Wars, and Golda will win this. The only thing Clone might have is the Ravens, but even then, that's really risky. Slashers are flex AA, after all. They can do a decent amount of damage against air, especially when you have a dozen of them. As Golda currently does. Or a little over a dozen. Golda finally pushing back Clone's Reclaim Core, but even then, that's... At this point... At this point, Clone's already got their Overdrive and Main Economy to back that up, so they are still ahead in terms of economy. And they still have Reclaim. They still have 15 metal per second of Reclaim. No, 25 metal per second of Reclaim. Like, they have all of Golda's static economy in Reclaim. 
Actually, no, gold has tannin reclaim as well, so never mind. It's not quite all of the static. Well, it is all the static economy, but that's not quite as good as it sounds. It's like 15 metal per second. So yeah, Klon, very aggressive there. Golda is taking about 15 metal per second, while Goldklon is almost reliably taking 25 metal per second in reclaim. Although losing a few maces in the process, this is really pushing forward, but it has been worth it so far. The southwest being probably the best location to claim. And Golda is very weak over here. I mean, okay, not that weak, because these slashers can move forward. And actually, Klon, Golda sees that Klon is going over to the northwest and is blocking that off. But that was a juke. Klon instead going over to the southwest. Now that they baited out, they, they baited out the slashers. Nice mix up there. Throwing the Ravagers over to the south. I mean, making the making Klon think they had to go to the north, but nope. Off to the south. So Golda is still able to defend against that fairly well. Didn't actually end up doing a huge amount of damage, so Klon, despite that, despite that rather nice move there, they still have a bit of work ahead of them in order, in order to win this game. Especially with those slashers, those are becoming a major pain. And the Scorchers, I think Klon wants to attack the slashers, but really can't afford to put them out of position. Nice use of the Ravens, though. However, that was really risky. But the Ravagers able to take the shots from the Slashers while the Scorchers now come in. Confident that the Scorchers are not going to attack from Golda. Klon goes in with the Scorchers, closes in, gets rid of the Slashers. Doesn't get rid of the Levelers, naturally. The Levelers will tear apart the Scorchers. But still gets rid of most of the Slashers, and that is not a bad kill. It's just, it's just the Levelers. That's the only problem. If those Levelers were to go down. Like, you know, if the Ravens took care of them, but no, it looks like Gold Klon decides they can't do anything, which I really don't agree with. They, had, they were ahead in economy, they were ahead in military, they just needed to break apart the Northeast. It was just, yeah, trying to get in. I mean, Golda really had a good idea of what was going on and where to be at any time, even with that mix-up. That was, that was nice, that was a nice little trick there, but it did not work. And yeah, Klon, Golda did have type counters in a lot of ways. Still, Klon had overall the advantage even without the reclaim they had the advantage so anyway i hope you enjoyed that and i don't know if i'm going to do another one tonight i suppose i might as well got time currently yeah got time so i will have another replay for you guys in just a moment oh, that should be good no actually that's going to be yeah, let's go with this. You guys are going to be Flipstep and Lori on Ravage, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.